Hi book lovers! Today I'm getting my animal on. I have my furry vest and I'm going to be showing you a range of stunning non-fiction mostly books about nature, flora, fauna, landscapes, our natural world. A uh, huge collection of them. Oh are you shocked? I have a huge collection of something uh, but it is truly a subject that's really dear to my heart and in fact a large proportion of the books that I have created have had in some way featured nature. Uh, I will show you in order of rough publication. My uh, A Kids Year series is an Aussie year and it just takes you through the, uh, the 12 months in Australia. It's published by EK Books, illustrated by the fabulous Tina Snelling and it does feature a lot of natural flora and fauna of course and there's I think seven books in the series around the world. Eco Warriors, this one is with the National Library of Australia and this was done with my fabulous publisher Susan Hall uh, and uh, it's quite an old book now I think it was 2012 or something it was published 2013 and it's basically um, a photographic book that incorporates some beautiful artwork from the National Library and uh, traditional artwork, historical artwork and it has this wonderful eco theme uh, taking us through all these beautiful plants that are endemic to Australia. Uh, the other one is Australia Illustrated. This is EK Books. Uh, this is the first version and then this is the second version. We've done two. And this one again is uh, non-fiction and it basically takes you around Australia and shows you all the various um, states and the bits and pieces that can be found there and it does have uh, some of it <clears throat> focuses on nature here yeah, and nature trails through uh, the overland track through central Tasmania bees birds moths yeah so that covers some kind of nature scapes as well then um, I really started to get really nature driven from here on in so this is the gum family illustrated by fabulous Christina Booth and published by the National Library and this essentially takes kids on a journey through Australia and around our natural um, geological sites. There's a map that shows you where the, the, the koala family end up going from Uluru through to um, the Bungle Bungle Range, Blue Mountains, uh, Cradle Mountain, Hastings Caves, Twelve Apostles. Yep. Uh, next one, of course, is Mamie. This is Harper Collins. This one takes you through the naturescape of Meg Gibbs' life, who created Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie, among other beautiful books, and um, has a strong nature focus and showcases the animals and uh, plants of Australia as we move through the book. These beautiful gum trees. Uh, then, of course, Fauna. This is Australia's Most Curious Creatures National Library and that takes us on a journey through uh, our fabulous, unique Australian animals, the echidna, the cassowary uh, and uh, kangaroo etc. There's a lot. Ivy Bird, published by Blue Dot Kids Press in the States and Windy Hollow in Australia and that is basically a peek at animals around the world with a little bit of an Australia focus about a little girl who dresses up with uh, as different birds and lots of nature play in this and uh, lastly I Heart the World which has a lot of flora and fauna through it um, again particularly our Australian unique Australian animals you can see here the different trees uh, and the different ecosystems around the world and the different continents of the world cake of course <laughs> and featuring uh, classic animals endemic to each continent, trees of Africa, etc, etc. So yeah, I kind of have a nature obsession and I think as we're getting more and more, uh, you know, living life increasingly digitally, I think it's really important to try to get out into nature and to encourage children to engage with nature, particularly when it comes to our animals. And in Australia, we have the highest uh, mammal in, uh, extinction rate in the world and uh, getting our next generation to fall in love with animals and get to know them and to care for them, our animals are going to stand a much better chance. All right, so I have a pile of fabulous books to show you. I'm just going to give you little peeks at them, otherwise we'll be here till next Tuesday. I know some of you will be fine with that, as I would be. But anyway, let's get into it. So this is a massive, oh, this is a large 
exact format books. I'll just show you these first so we can get through these. The big one here is um, by Walker Studio, um, Ingela P. Arrhenius, and uh, it's basically, oh my goodness, it's stunning. It's basically a poster book, really. So I'll just take you through some of the pages. You can see this superb graphic design style illustrations. The book could absolutely be dismantled and put on a wall in your house or your child's bedroom. Um, but it's just absolutely stunning. I love it. I love it. I love to just immerse in the illustrations. That is gorgeous. Uh, this I have, I'm sure, shown you before. I've done a large format video, large format book video, and I think it's in there. Uh, this is a companion to, of course, Animalium. And Animalium was the first book in the Welcome to the Museum series this is published by Five Mile Press in our territory in Australia, New Zealand and uh, other publishers worldwide. And this was the first book curated by Katie Scott. Katie is an incredible illustrator. She has this beautiful traditional classic style but with that lovely um, uh, childlike twist to it that just is children will just fall into, hugely attractive to both children and adults. And uh, Jenny Broom worked on this one as well, and Kathy Willis worked on Botanicum. There is a bunch of books in the series. I'll just quickly show you because I have shown you um, these books before. It's for a little bit more of a sophisticated audience, so perhaps children that are a little bit older. This is so big I can't fit it. Um, and uh, But the text is still accessible, and certainly children of a younger age can explore the book. But it's so gorgeously designed, divinely designed, with a sort of a little bit of a, a museum-esque feel, a classic museum-esque feel. Absolutely stunning. And there are poster books featuring these books as well. So you can actually remove the pages and frame them. And I have those, of course. And Botanicum, unbelievably beautiful book. Just look, really. Just superb. With an intro, look at that with an intro and then featuring uh, certain types of plants. So for example, here are fruit trees, ornamental shrubs. Look at the magnolia. <gasps> oh, glory. Look at this environment, rainforests. It goes on and on. Absolutely exquisite. Do look that up. Another large format book I'll just show you briefly because I have shown you before is The Book of Bees. This is Pure de Socha. This is published by Thames and Hudson. And uh, again, just the whole thing is about bees. Exquisitely done, gorgeously illustrated, completely kid-friendly but still stunning, striking illustrations. Fabulously curated information. Fascinating, fascinating book. And of course, its companion... The Book of Trees, Piotr Socha and Veshek Gopalski, uh, again Thames and Hudson, unbelievably beautiful illustrations. I will just show you some of my favourites, if I can find, well, of course I can't find it, but anyway, I mean, look, how enchanting, you know that's just going to draw in any age. This one is for slightly younger children in that the information presented is a little bit more bite-sized and perhaps accessible. Uh, but certainly people of any age, kids of any age, like you and me, can indulge and enjoy this exquisite book and it careens between fact and legend and fiction and all sorts of glorious things. Um, and also has a beautiful... Uh, cultural bent so it focuses on um, elements of different cultures and how people do differently things differently around the world which of course we love. Next one is The Variety of Life. This is by the astonishing Nicola Davies. She has done a stack of divine non-fiction books on nature and science and she's just so so clever. Illustrated by Lorna Scobie. Love 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 her illustrations. They have that realistic look but that charming childlike uh you know those eyes that just create such character for um the the animals in the book love the pop of spot color beautiful uh scratchy cloth bound cover with um embossed title here and a little bit of sheen absolutely beautiful look at those end papers if you are an end paper lover oh i know your heart's racing very Oliver Jeffers-esque, the colouring and the stars, just 
magnificent. I would put that on a wall in a heartbeat. All right, and then inside, this is for younger children. This is by Hoda, this book. Uh, lovely um, short introduction, but it's accessible for younger children. And then this brilliant smattering of types of animals with this delightful curvy writing. It includes the scientific name. And again, great character in these illustrations. Look at the polar bear and baby, just beautiful. And that little snippet of information that just makes a child enchanted. And do you know what? We need to educate children by all means via books, but the first thing we need to do is enchant them. Entertain, enchant, enlighten, and then educate. Uh, that's my four E's. So just beautifully done. Reminds me a little of Yuval Zomer's books. Look at the mice. I mean, come on. One of my favourites, this one. Charming, funny, love it. All right, now we'll go for some slightly smaller ones. This is a recent release, Tim Flannery. This is with Heidi Grant, and it's called Explore Your World, Weird, Wild, Amazing. And it's very comprehensive. It's got a lot of pages, I think. Gosh, let's have a look, 240 or something. Yep, yep, 240. Ah. <laughs> When you love books so much, you can just guess by seeing the thickness of it. Lovely and heavy, beautiful UV cover with lots of um, uh, embossing on it. Gorgeously produced, which is the Heidi Grant way. And this is illustrated by Sam Caldwell. Oh, they're like my four to end papers, those ones. The book has um, a slight sheen to it. Would have loved... Uh, you know, because it was my decision, would have loved some matte paper, but, you know, it's still stunning. It's a beautiful book. Divided into separate uh, regions, so we've got water, forest, sky, desert, and fabulously there's a glossary and index, which you really do need uh, for a book of this size. And it's really gorgeous, this book. It's just full of, it's plump with information and uh beautifully presented here's a bit of an intro and then presented in these lovely pull out boxes here we really need this kind of detailed heavy information particularly for younger children you know upper primary um, to to be able to absorb it and not feel overwhelmed by it and uh, there's certainly the layout does this so we provide imagery to draw the child in and we don't overload you'll also notice book creators that this um, uh, line height is quite deep and when we have large paragraphs not that these are huge but because they're pockets they've not been divided into separate paragraphs they're just one chunk of text and when we have a nice deep line height and even a wider kerning which is the uh, space between the um, lettering and the spaces uh, it really helps the eye and helps not to overwhelm children and it looks beautiful design wise so look, this covers all types of things from conservation to, um, you know, <laughs> poop and pee. I love that. The biggest animals. Um, how big is an otter? How they, how they send messages in their poop. Um, terrible table manners with the, uh, na is that the narwhal? No, that's a snubfish dolphin. There you go. Lots of different types of dolphin. Um, fabulous book shock full of information on all sorts of natural um, elements that make up our beautiful planet just wonderful wonderful stuff so look at that one all right next we have a dk book i have collected dk books forever i think they're genius they're just so so exquisitely researched and presented uh, um, illustrations divine photography divine uh, and I actually was surprised this was DK because it's a little bit of a departure. I really uh, love combining photography and illustration. I'm trying to put this in the best way I can. But sometimes the DK books, uh, even though the photography is exquisite and the illustration is exquisite, sometimes I, I think design-wise they don't fit so well, sometimes Lonely Planet do that too, where they've got a mixture of really superb illustration and then a lot of photographs, and there's just a disconnect between them design-wise, and it frustrates me a little bit. I still buy the books because I love them, but this is really different, and I think it's probably one of their best books yet. The Wonders of Nature by Ben Hoare. 
stunning cloth bound cover, beautiful foiling, that's a gold foiling on the cover and on the back. Look at that exquisite um, artwork, the end papers, superb, love the purple. Contents have that lovely kid friendly, this little icons there that help kids navigate their way through the contents because it's a very thick book. And you can see here it starts out from the ground up, so rocks and minerals goes through this uh, um, sort of family tree of, I guess this would be um, the hardest, yeah, hardest to softest. So from talc through to the diamond. Um, look at that, beautiful, beautiful gold, quartz, desert rose, malachite. And the thing is, <clears throat> these are actual photographs but they've been saturated in a way or designed in a way that makes them look like they are illustrations. You can see here with this mushroom, the saturation and uh, the uh, design here with that photograph of the mushroom on this page beautifully matches the illustration on this page. And I just think it gives a lovely design element to the book, being the fuss pot that I am. But look, superb, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, adults, you would just fall in love with this book. All right, we've got a lot to get through. I'm going to try to speed it up a bit. Let's look at another big one. This is Urban Jungle. <clears throat> this is Big Picture Press. Adore their books. Do look them up. I have every single one, I'm sure. Written and illustrated by Vicki Woodgate. And this is um, basically city maps, so we get to explore our urban animals because a lot of books, of course, focus on our natural world, and this one takes a look at the animals we can find in a more urban setting. Urban Jungle. Look at this. Look at this beautiful illustration. This super modern, super quirky, fabulous contents page. So we're journeying around the different continents. Love the tonal elements of the colouring. First we get an introduction about the city and then we start travelling around. We have a map and then we look at Vancouver and the different types of animals we can find around the city. And it has little pull-out boxes for focus. It has this very basic key here. So this is um, this is for you know kids of uh, primary school age, but again, anyone can enjoy it. San Francisco. And the great thing about these books is that it will reveal animals that might surprise you. So who would have known that you'd find a coyote around San Francisco, you know? Um, and we're talking in the city as well. Otters, of course, sharks. Um, Chicago, and then on it goes, South America, through Europe. Oh, so beautiful. Love the illustrations. Uh, Africa here, through the Middle East, through Asia, and of course, we're always last, aren't we? Oceania. <laughs> I pushed so hard to get Oceania at the front in I Heart the World, but uh, couldn't muster it. And, of course, we start with the map and then we go on and explore. And look at these lovely colourways, really sherbety and vibrant and lots and lots of fun for kids. So that's a really good fun one. Uh, another large one is Natural World. Now, this is by Amanda Wood and Mike Jolly. It's published by Wide-Eyed, another obsession I have with Wide-Eyed books, illustrated by the illustrious Owen Davey. And if you know me, you know my obsession with him. And it says, a visual compendium of wonders from nature. No end papers. <laughs> but anyway, the rest is beautiful. Lovely matte paper. Opens with an editor's note. Beautifully designed uh, contents page. Wide eyed always have gorgeously designed works. And I love Owen's illustrations. Very typical of his beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, so here's a little piece on... Um, Living Things, sorry this fur is making me itch a little, uh, and this is probably for slightly older children, so upper primary into high school, the uh, uh, content is a little bit more sophisticated. And uh, love, love, love that use of um, breakout text here, uh, little graphs, pie charts, you know, this all helps children retain and be drawn into information, particularly if it's a little bit tricky. A guide to animal and plant groups, again, very basically done, but so exquisitely done. And these are the things that fascinate kids. Kids love to learn stuff they've never known before. 
you know, they, they thrive on learning something new and uh, it's great to have books that allow us visually to draw children in so that they're encouraged to retain that information. Skeletons and Skulls, it's an absolutely exquisite book. Look at the design here. Look at this. Really, really beautiful. This is also one of my favourite books on nature and it covers a variety of um, fabulous uh, elements, natural elements, and it has here, it says 67 information charts. Wonderful stuff. All right. Um, this one is by Chris Packham. Amazing Animal Journeys. Uh, Jason Cockcroft is uh, the illustrator and this one is published by Red Shed. Stunning book, lovely um, UV coating on the cover. Love the illustrations, love the colourways. And uh, this has, I guess, more a, a younger sort of feel to it. Look at that beautiful colouring there. Starts out with a map. And uh, it's, it, I guess it has some kind of narrative to it. So it basically takes kids on a journey about how animals journey around the world, how they migrate, how they travel. So here we've got every year billions of animals move from one part of our planet to the other and it talks about how some migrate in, um, for uh, food, they migrate for weather, they migrate to mate, uh, they return to where they were born as in salmon, you know, it explores a variety of different animals and why they would move around the world. Beautifully, beautifully done. Love the different perspective here. So fantastic for the younger set because it kind of has a bit of a narrative to it. It could be something that is read in class. All right, another big one. This is a world of plants and this is Walker Studio. Uh, James Brown and Martin Jenkins were responsible for this exquisite book and it celebrates the incredible world of plants in this essential guide. There's a series of these books as well um, and they're doing incredibly well. I think I have all of them. Oh, you're surprised. What I love about this book is it's so high on design and love the um, colourways. Great contents page. So things are covered, things like cycling carbon, seeds, spores, how plants spread, rainforests, plant hotspots, collecting plants, breeding plants, plants in peril. And just look at the illustrations. Love that they have this monochrome palette. Look here. So we have a side of, um, over here on the Verso page, we have a side that focuses on some information and then we have the visual that actually showcases what we've talked about with a few more information, bits and bobs, uh, little labelling and bits and pieces there. It makes it very accessible for kids. The family uh, tree, the plant family tree about how plants came to be, Secret Life of Flowers, just beautifully, beautifully done and very accessible. Uh, another obsession of mine is Mark Martin, he's an Australian creator and this is one of his earlier books. I know you've probably got a river and you've probably got um, uh, a bunch of his other fabulous books, What's Up and all those gorgeous ones. This is one of his earliest, I believe, and some people may not know about this. It's Exotic Animals A to Z, and it's published by Big Picture Press. And uh, it's more, um, this one is more, I guess, it's not obviously chock full of information. It is an ABC book after all, but it's more about the art than it is the story. But how beautifully this artwork is done. Very Charlie Harper, this style of illustration. And of course, he's another obsession. So if you love Mark's work and just want to pour over his exquisite creations, then this is the book for you. And of course, even the very young need to be exposed to beautiful artwork, do they not? Um, and you're certainly going to find this in Mark's book. <clears throat> you might find that online somewhere. I believe it's a, um, been around quite a while. All right, <laughs> nearly there. Nature's Day. This is uh, Kay Maguire and Danielle Kroll. Discover the world of wonder on your doorstep. Wide Art Editions again. Love, love, love their work. So this one has a lovely cloth bound cover. Exquisite illustrations. That beautiful modern folksy style of illustration. And uh, love that it's about... Uh, looking for the natural world in your backyard, down the street, at the local park. 
Uh, we can't always get lost in a Norwegian rainforest as much as I would love to right now. Um, so this book encourages children to find nature in their everyday, which there were some end papers. But otherwise, this is just exquisitely designed. Beautiful, beautiful book. Look how pretty. So things like um, garden blooms, um, falling leaves, bare branches, goes through the season, spring, summer, autumn, winter, splashing about street life, woodland walks, and what you can discover on these walks. And it might be a lovely way uh, to set up a little you know, a little nature walk and to collect things along the way and to study things along the way. And here are these lovely little pockets of information um, that children can be totally enchanted by and look out for on their walks. So another sort of urban, urban nature book. Absolutely beautiful. All right. Another one here by Thomas Hegbrook. This is 360 Degrees. Love their books too. Love, 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 love. Uh, Story World's Nature. Oh, just look at this cover. Look at that screen print style overlay. Ugh, the colourways, the title. It's just a perfect, perfect cover. Lovely in papers. Thick. Beautiful creamy matte paper, absolutely beautiful. And what I love about this book is it's just unusual. It's not what you would typically expect. It's a series of plates, Charlie Harper-esque plates of the natural world. And uh, it allows children to discover the animals and, uh, and perhaps make their own narratives vis-a-vis um, -vis this little squirrel here who is digging down in and, and looking for an acorn. Um, the way the insects eat a leaf. It's just exquisitely produced this book. Um, here we have a, a, a herd of deer um, on the run being chased, you know. So it has these beautiful little narratives built in that you can explore with kids and make up your own tales. So art lovers, this book is for you. And do not underestimate the ability of wordless books and books with beautiful artwork to enchant children and uh, um, educate them in some way, uplift them and, and inspire them. Don't underestimate that. All right, nearly there, The Wonder Garden. Look at this fabulous book. This is by Christiana S. Williams and it was written by Jenny Broom. Uh, this is Wide Eyed Editions again. And look at the shimmer, shimmer, shimmer on the cover. Beautiful foiling. Fabulous end papers. And look at the exquisite spot colour through this book, combined with this traditional, almost, um, oh God, like etching style illustration. Can you see there? That lovely, even on the back cover, you can see that sort of traditional etching style illustration with these modern pops of colour. Why well, I'd really go out on a limb. I love that about them. They, they do their own thing, and that's why their books do so well, you know. So here we have, we visit different parts of the world. So here we're visiting, visiting the Chihuahuan Desert, the Amazon Rainforest, the Black Forest, the Himalayan Mountains, and the Great Barrier Reef. And we're exploring these different animals and plants in all of these various um, spots around the world. So here in the Amazon, look at that. I mean, that's just... How could a child not fall into that and just fall in love, you know? There's 80 animals to explore in the book through five different habitats. Look. <gasps> Divine. And they're labelled here so kids can read the information and, uh, and see which animal is what. Look at the colour. Oh, just exquisite. Let's skip through to the Great Barrier Reef and see what, oh, look how beautiful. Oh, my God. See what's uh, in the Great Barrier Reef. I'm presuming it's at the end of the book. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not at the end for once. Poor old Australia. Ah, here we go. It's in the middle. Hurrah. How gorgeous. 
Art Lovers Rejoice and that pink, I need that in a lipstick instantly. All right. <laughs> All right. These books you may have seen. They're written by Diana Hutz Aston and uh, they're illustrated by Sylvia Long. They're published by Chronicle Books. Beautiful dust jackets. Look at the illustrations, the style of the covers. Perfect cover again. Illustrations, Sylvia's done such an exquisite uh, job. There's a few of them. I have an Egg is Quiet and a Rock is Lively. Uh, love the, ja the uh, oh, what do you call it? The um, ah, oxymoron <laughs> about a rock being lively when, of course, it does have life, does it not? Um, just, just, just beautiful. Look at that. Look how divine the different types of rock. This is as you write geode. And look, a rock is lively. This is snowflake obsidian. Bubbling like a pot of soup deep beneath the earth's crust, liquid molten boiling. Of course, we're starting out with lava here. So it does have a narrative to it, but then it has pockets of information here, depending on what type of rock it is. A rock melts at temperatures between 1300 and 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so just love that little narrative element and then the pockets of information that kids can explore. And then in An Egg is Quiet, uh, another obsession, eggs. Love eggs. Look how divine these eggs are through the book. Look. So beautifully designed. An Egg is Quiet. Of course, until it hatches, right? And look at this. Really, really beautiful book. And love, again, that blending of the narrative with the uh, with a little bit of um, non-fiction information. Look, an egg is giving. Gives us these beautiful creatures. Oh, so, so, so lovely. All right, itchy nose, sorry. Right, two to go. Unseen World. This is published by Water and Earth Books and the creators are Helen Rajkak and Damien Lavadant. I'll put all of these in the notes below. This is real life microscopic creatures hiding all around us. Now, if such things freak you out, you better not read this book. <laughs> Love the design, the contents page there. And this is for slightly younger readers. What I love about it is the spreads open out. Okay, so we start off with a little bit of uh, an introduction, the underwater dance of plankton, and then we go on to see this large spread, and then we have things labelled with numbers, and there's more information, so crab larva, shrimp larva, a fish egg, and it goes on to give more information about the kooky creatures you can find underneath a microscope. There's another one. This one is The Secret Life of the Beach. So fabulous, really cool folksy illustrations, beautiful colourways, see here? And kids, of course, love any kind of book that can be interactive to lift the flap to see what you can find in this microscopic world, which is often quite astonishing. All right, and the last ones, so many more, but we need to stop sometime. There's two of them, love Britta Tekentrop's work, always have, completely obsessed with her. This is by Little Tiger in the UK. And, um, you know, if you haven't seen her work, you better get your act together because it's just truly stunning. I think I got tree first from memory. Um, a peek through picture book. So here we have a little, this is for younger kids, we have a little hole here in the front of a little owl. Look how gorgeous. Oh, oh, just the end papers, just exquisite. This looks like colour blocking. It could be digital, but it's knowing Britta, it's um, colour blocked. And we have this little narrative that takes us through the book with the little owl at the centre. So in the forest, all is still gripped by icy, so I, winter's icy chill. Owl sits watching in his tree. No one sees as much as he. And of course, we follow the seasons through as this tree changes and the world, the natural world, goes on around the tree and around this little owl nesting in the centre of the tree. Beautiful artwork. Enough through the uh, various spreads, enough colourway change and narrative change and um, detail change to keep the child engaged. Uh, just absolutely enchanting, beautiful, 
beautiful, beautiful story through the seasons. And then B, which I potentially like even more, um, Nature's Tiny Miracle. Look at the cover. And you can see here that the pages have been cut all the way through. So let's explore that. See that? Lovely end paper and title page incorporating the cutout. And again, this lovely rhyming narrative. Dawn is breaking on a brand new day <clears throat> and in the meadow, poppies sway. A bee appears, striped black and gold. A wonder of nature is about to unfold. Striking illustrations. Adore, adore. And on we go as we meet this beautiful bee. And the cutout changes up here. And we get another peak. And look. Oh! Just so pretty. And then of course more cutouts as we go through the story. The children will love exploring a story like this. If you love divine artwork, if you love bees like I do, um, you will be enchanted. Again, cloth bound, beautiful colour, lovely matte pages. All right. Oh, I think I need to go for a walk in nature now. I'm feeling rather inspired. Uh, okay, well I hope that you saw something new today and uh, are set to explore uh, a new book you've never seen um, or dig out one that you already have to re-explore. Uh, please support your local bookstores during this difficult time. Maybe look up one of these books and pop an order in uh, and uh, let's get more books on nature into the hands of our children who could not need it, need it more. And uh, I'm speaking for me, the child in me as well. So lovely to see you again. And I will be back with some more of my collection. And I also have some creator um, videos coming up too for those of you who are creating books for children. All right, take good care and do hop outside and uh, look up at the sunshine, won't you? And uh, see what you can spot in a tree. Okay, bye.